Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be printing with some flexible filament on the Prusa Mini. So, if you were lucky enough to watch one of my earlier videos, you saw we printed a mixture of materials on the Prusa and just looked at the results and what this printer can actually do. There was a lot of comments saying you didn't show the flex, how flexible is the flex, so I thought I'd make a video just printing a few parts and viewing them and going over the, the final results really. Just give you an insight to if you were to buy some flex and put it through your Prusa, what results are you going to get. As you can see behind me, I've got the Prusa on the shelf and I've got the Prusa slicer open. I've got four or five files in mind that I'm gonna run through the printer. I'll slice them and load them up. I think they'll give a good idea of how Flex works. Um, they're different style parts. Some are a bit thicker and more solid and some are taller and thinner. So it'll give a good mixture of what Flex is like across a variety of parts. Uh, so yeah, on that note, let's get straight into the video, um, load the Flex and start printing. So guys, we're getting straight into the first print, which is a cable tie clip for bundling your cables together. So it's quite a nice simple print. I've printed this with 100% infill uh, because there's, not, there's no voids inside it and we want it to be quite strong so you can wrap it around something and hold it in place. But the first layer went down really well. Um, no glue was used at this point. You'll find out later on in the video where I had to use it, but this print went down really well. Um, no issues to speak of really. So as we get further through, you can see this part starting to come to life. 67% there and it's working its way through. And we get to this end sort of point where the cable's held. Um, this is where the print got slightly more complex and it's where we saw a few issues or defects on the final part so where you're creating that void and you're getting the overhang there was some bridging that wasn't as I would have liked but it did look good and it was nice and quick to print and equally very usable so we've got the print bed off and we're having a quick look around this thing it looks really sharp from here um, you can see a few flexes but as it is a flexible print it just moves with it uh, but it looks good and I'm happy with it. You can see this is where the flex as a functional part really kind of um, shows its strength. You can see we're pulling it apart. It is nice and solid and very durable. This is the issue I spoke of. So where you have the detail on the top, it's not perfect. And that whole one side, it's spot on. It is bridged perfectly. And then on the other side, it's closed it up. So that needs to be cut out, but it's not the end of the world. Just slightly annoying, and I'd like to know why that was happening. But overall, happy with that one, and we're going to move on to the next part. So the next print or prints on my list were the set of USB iPhone covers. So these are the two sort of silicon covers, silicon-like covers that go on the end of your cable just to protect it. Not that I've ever used one, but I saw it and thought they're both small parts, they're 100% infill and it'll be interesting to see what they print like, um, especially being a lot smaller than the first part. But we threw them into the Prusa slicer and sliced them up and I just positioned them what I thought was a suitable distance away from each other. Um, as you can see, the problems came along when the print started getting further up. So you can see as it moved from one part to the other, it just wanted to string. Um, I'm not sure why, um, and I did move 
warrant, I did run this print again and move it a bit further apart, but we just had the same issues. So I don't know if anyone else can shed some light on this, but from my experience on my printer, my settings I'm running now, I would avoid printing two parts this small close together. But um, yeah, apart from that, the actual print body is really nice. It's a, it's a nice print apart from that overhang and um, they look good, the finish was nice, they were very flexible and it was it's a durable material that can be functional. Um, so next here I'm going to throw this onto my cable to prove that it does work. Um, it is a slightly tight fit but it works. So there you go, cable and it does go on nicely. Not that it looks great with a bit hanging off it, but it proves a concept, which was cool. So that's that for this print, and we'll move on to my next item. So up next was one that I was quite excited about, mainly because this is something that you could genuinely print and use on a cool project, like a RC car or something along those lines. But put it into the uh, Prusa slicer sliced it um, I think I had a 20% infill on this which looking back was actually a bit too much um, the part came out quite solid but gave a good idea nonetheless but we started printing and it was all looking good um, first layer went down well and it was building fine from there um, the problems came when it got a bit higher up and as you see it's managed to stick um, move from the bed so had to stop this print which was a bit annoying and we yeah we had to look at it and I tried to work out why it wasn't sticking because I hadn't had this issue and I assume it's just because of the small area or surface area touching the bed but did another one and I changed nothing and as you can expect do the same thing you shouldn't expect different results and unfortunately this one did exactly the same thing. So we got to 52% and I'm thinking, oh, this is going well, this one's gonna work. And a few minutes later, I come back and it is completely just to the side. So very annoying, but it's part of the process and we move on to make this work. So my next approach was to get the glue stick out and I thought there's no way this thing is coming unstuck. So put a stick down and we run again and it just looked a bit better straight away. I could tell that this one was going to stick. So luckily this one ran the whole way through and we got our final part which was the tyre. Which And you can see here it's a nice print. We've got some defects on the inside but externally it's really nice. There's no uh, gaps in it. There's no weird lumps. But um, yeah it looks good. And then there's half three attempts. So the first one... Uh, not very far, the second about 55 and the final one which was all good. The next one on the list was one of the bigger prints I did in this video and this was a stress ball. <laughs> Actually quite a freaky looking stress ball but we started by putting it in the Prusa slicer and working out the infill pattern we wanted and the sort of infill percentage as well as a few other parameters I think I went for a 20% infill and I can tell you right now that was a big mistake because this thing was rock solid um, when it started printing you could see oh there's quite a big void in that you'll be able to compress it but the higher it got up the more material we added um, it just became really solid but nonetheless as a print the TPU the flex printed really well you can see that's a quite a, a clean part and um, the infill is complex and it's not stringing it's going down really nicely and it was just accurate overall but we also opted for the glue stick process on this one because I could not risk this thing coming loose halfway through because that would be heartbreaking but you can see there the tops finishing off the creepy face and then we'll pull it off and have a quick look um, so yeah this just popped off standard process and we'll have a quick look around it you can see first off there's a bit of string in between the eyebrows on the face and the nose which kind of replicates what we saw in the earlier parts but as a finish on the outside 
that curved finish is really nice and actually quite smooth as well um, there's the detail so the details lost a little bit but the overall shapes perfect and I give it a squeeze here and as a stress ball there's no way unless you are the Hulk there is no way you're compressing this easily if anything I've printed a really poor oddly shaped baseball but yeah it was cool and it gives the idea and shows the material being put to use so on to the final and possibly my favorite print uh, we start in the Prusa slicer as we have with all the others and we get this ready to go so we create a g-code file and this is one consisting of multiple different belts it was a standard file and straight away same issue I still haven't learned which is funny but I thought this would stick being a, a bit more surface area but nope so this one came off and I thought actually let's print a bigger belt just to give it a bit more chance and these were a bit too small to really see the detail so created a new belt and ran that and it all went well print was fine I did put glue stick down on this one just to be sure and all came out well but yeah you can see the small detail here of the teeth and actually it worked really well um, and equally as well it wasn't too much of a long print so that was also good but let that finish off and then we go to pull it off the bed you can see straight away it's a nice print a little bit of string around the outside but nothing too major so we're okay with that part comes off you can see it's stuck down pretty well unlike the others and we can take a real look at it first thing you can see is how flexible this actually is and then a closer look at the detail we've got a nice smooth outside edge and then the ribbed sort of teeth inside which is the belt which the gear would sit against but quality is nice and it is super flexible as you can see this moves really well and I can imagine it works exactly as you would want so overall really good print so guys that is the end of this 3d printing video on flex slash TPU material I hope that gave you all a good insight into what it's like to put this material through a stock machine um, I know we've added the light, but in terms of actually printing capabilities, it's a stock machine. Um, came across a few issues, uh, the first one being stringing. So we had the issue of a lot of stringing on parts or between two parts. Um, I think that could be down to my machine. I wouldn't expect that from a material. I haven't seen it on other things, so maybe I need to go away and revise my settings and do some research. So I'll definitely be revisiting that. Another big problem I had was adhesion so I went with the texture sheet which is recommended for flex and I found that on a few of my prints as you saw we had the print breaking free I don't know whether this was down to the the conditions the temperature or the size of my print but that's one thing to bear in mind just I think be safe really go with the print stick from the off and you avoid that issue but looking at my prints um, obviously we had the tire which we had a few issues with but actually when that finished up that was a really cool print and quite functional like that is tough and you I could see that being put to use um, in terms of actually a flexible material I think it's very dependent on the design you pick so obviously we printed this stress ball which is a bit creepy but I thought it would be nice and flexible with 10% infill but actually we end up printing a really solid ugly little things go on the shelf but nonetheless it, the finish was really good and TPU printed really well um, I think as I mentioned the best print for me was this belt because how cool is that how easy to make a belt and you can do different sizes different teeth size um, I think that's just a really cool thing to print and you can see that's exactly where a flex is needed for those solid infill parts but they're quite small and you need the, the strength in it as well but that's an overview of what we've printed once again I hope you enjoyed the video um, <clears throat> it was a bit of a different one but I hope to revisit another material in the future until the next one take it easy and I'll see you then